What is going on guys, it's your boy DPJ here today with another Destiny video and in today's Destiny video I'm going to run you guys through what we get from the 1.0.3 update that's just been applied to all consoles. Now there's a lot to get through so let's just get straight into it. Now we're going to start with voice and they've added a new social feature that enables users to access a channel for team chat. Match made teammates will now be able to talk to each other in strikes and other team based crucible matches. Now with classes they've fixed an issue in which two players who performed a melee lunge basically at the same time would teleport through each other. They fixed an issue in which the blink strike damage would be caused by colliding with the blink strike rather than melee impact and they fixed an issue in which the warlock bonds dismantled into tighter materials. Weapons and general we have reduced camera shake when being hit with explosive rounds. Perks we have clown cartridge replaced clown cartridge perk with other perks in shotgun upgrade trees. Head seeker fixed an issue in which the bonus precision damage perk did not always get applied activities and we have missions the buried city fixed an exploit in mars that will clear all enemies from clover spray strikes we have winter's run fixed an exploit zone in the axar boss encounter difficulty will scale less for free player fire teams making strikes less deadly for them Heroics fixed an issue in which engrams earned during daily and weekly heroic activities were not displayed in the post game carnage report. Now we have the event iron banner. We all know about this but I'll still run you guys through what they state anyway. Players must be now level 20 and above to lead an iron banner fire team. Players below level 20 can accompany players above level 20. Lord Saladin now has 5 reputation ranks increased from 3. New features added, tempered buff and reforging. Cinematics fixed several issues with synchronization of cinematic subtitles in various languages. Destinations and combatants fixed an issue in which Vex Cyclops and Hive Shrieker health bars would not update properly. Reduced the number of Star Sword Vandals that spawn in the basement of the terrestrial complex on lower difficulties. Events public events will now occur 10 to 15% more frequently in public spaces. Now the vendors increased the number of bounty slots in their inventory from 5 to 10. Added shaders to either Levante's stock in the tower, which is about time for that. Uh, shader preview functionality added to the vendor and the inventory screens. Emblems on vendors can now be previewed in the inventory screen. Marks and reputation icons and meters were adjusted to better differentiate the two. Fixed an issue in which strange coins and motes of light would not route to the postmaster if your inventory was full. Fixed an issue in which engrams were not displaying the possible contents in the Cryptarch vendor menu. Fixed an issue in which players did not receive bounty or mission credit when assisting in killing of a walker or vex cyclops. Armor stat upgrade potentials added to item compare on vendor and inventory screens. Now PvP, now for general we have enabled revive scoring for skirmish and salvage. Fix an exploit with revive scoring when entering a kill volume and having a teammate revive you for easy points. Adjusted join in progress settings for all playlists to minimize long periods of unbalanced teams due to players quitting out of matches. Added new functionality to match preformed fire teams against each other. This will slowly roll out to all players over time, but we'll start with the 3v3 playlists. In 3v3, fire teams of two or more players will match together more frequently. In 6v6 games, fire teams of four or more players will match together more frequently. Now we have medals. Won't be beat now triggers correctly when a team wins a game after coming back from a 500 point losing deficit. Mark of the Unbroken no longer requires a minimum player count. Sum of all tiers no longer requires a minimum player count. Sum of all tiers should trigger consistently. Now we have maps and first light and they've implemented multiple fixes to stop players from getting into advantageous positions. We have blind watch, addressed some balancing issues for the control game type by moving zones, modifying routes and adding cover objects. Adjusted landing and respawn points to accommodate new geometry changes. Added protection to prevent players from getting on top of a pipe high above the intended playable space. Now we have Firebase Dalphy. Added protections to prevent players from getting outside the intended playable area between Zone A and the Crane Room. Rusted lands blocked off the monitors above Control Zone A to prevent players hiding in them. 
Shores of Time added a Vex pillar to prevent players from sniping through a small gap on the ninja platform, implemented multiple fixes to stop players from getting into unfairly advantageous positions. Then we have Exodus Blue, multiple fixes implemented to stop players from getting into advantageous positions, especially the giant holes reel near control zone A. Fixed an issue with visibility culling behind control zone A. Then we have Twilight Gap, adjusted landing points to keep players from fighting too soon into rumble matches. Added protections to prevent players from getting into unintended areas for example. Atop the security camera at control zone C. Added geometry to fill in small gaps that let players see out of the world. Now we're moving on to the hood and we have improved the readability of grenade and melee recharge states, improved the visibility of objectives in the motion tracker, improved the visual look of revived waypoint and the last man standing, added school modified descriptions to the navigation mode screen, fixed an issue in which the names of down teammates did not always display on screen. Now we're going on to orbit and we have destiny version number added to the character login screen, added dialogue imagery for various events, fixed an issue in which new items available from the special orders vendor would now show up in the message count in the director, it fixed an issue in which a playstation plus dialogue was mistakenly shown when selecting a specific pvp activity, added the countdown timers for weekly and special events, fixed various issues with the director animations, fixed an issue in which the player inventory screen would sometimes close during certain parts of the space flight sequence and have also added the post game carnage report for the previous game during matchmaking search. Then we have menus and general fixed an issue in which cursor speed in 4 slash 3 and power was not consistent. Then we have roster network connection quality indicates now added to the roster. New icons added to the scoreboard and roster to indicate voice problems due to connection issues, basically NAT issues. Um, added support for direct fire team joins from the roster on the Xbox One. Inventory, update spin metal, relic iron and helium filament icons to basically better represent in-game visuals. Fixed and updated several inventory icons and also fixed and updated several talent tree icons. Now we're moving on to audio, improved audio cues for sticking others and being stuck with certain grenades. They've also fixed an issue in which an audio cue would not play when completing a bounty. And they've also fixed an issue in which Guardian Dan referred to the wrong gender in French, Spanish and Portuguese. Now technical, added the ability for the bungee dock to send in-game alerts and messages. Fixed stability issues across all platforms. Fixed an issue that will cause a rare crash during space flight into activities. Improved patch installation process. Implemented PS3 specific performance optimizations. And fixed an issue causing beetle and lionfish kicks to orbit. Now that's it guys, that's what we are getting with the 1.0.3 patch, there's a shitload, I mean, if you guys want to go through all and check it all out, I will link the Destiny update uh, statement in that video description if you guys want to check it out, but that's what we're getting, it sounds good, now we're just going to have to wait for the Iron Banner, but well, what do you think about all this, they're doing the right thing in my opinion, but let me know your opinion down below, hope you enjoyed the video, thanks as always for watching, and peace out until next time, peace!